Hello everyone, my name is Salt, apologies for the delay, thank you all for making the last slot at Linux Fest Northwest 2017, I mean that deserves a pat on the back, I know this has been a long one for me, um, I will try to make this as smooth and painless as possible. My talk is about Civi CRM. Uh, this is apparently cutting off the bottom. Doesn't matter that much, but matters enough to not matter. Cool. All right. <clears throat> About me. Um, I've been doing this for a while. Been using Linux for over two decades. I currently am employed at the UW and work with Snowdrift Co-op. Great project. Love to talk to you more about it. We have a booth, and I might have some time. Uh, point is. I wanted to get out of tech and into community and one of the big steps to do that was to try to work with Civi Serum, a community thing, which we'll talk about in a minute. Anyone? Yeah? Uh, are any of you using CRMs currently? A couple? Okay. Um, are any of you using an alternative to Google Contacts? I mean, like your address book. Yeah, own, own cloud contacts. Own cloud contacts. Okay. Any other ones out there? Mason Builder. Co what? What was it? One. I said Mason Builder. Colab. Oh, sorry. Sorry. No. Yeah, yeah. You keep doing the same one. Which one? Or different? Same time. Uh, what was it? Up front. Sorry. Oh, Mason Builder. Nation Builder. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is off in my life after conferences. I I I get a lot of these. This does not include your sign-up sheets. This does not include a bunch of things. You know, can't include the things in your head. But this is what happens. To address this, specifically looking at Snowdrift, which is an open source project, community, whatnot, um, I thought about what tools are out there. And the big tool that is currently used for tracking this sort of thing is called a CRM. However, CRMs are usually customer relationship managers. That's because CRM comes from the business world where you're trying to say, oh, this person's purchased, but it's been this long, we should hit them up for new contact. Oh, this is a sales lead. Oh, this is. These tools have been around for a long time, but that is their focus. The CRM I'm going to talk to you about today is called Civi CRM, which was designed for civic needs, nonprofits, and generally the type of communities that we work with. Instead of customer relationship model or um, manager, um, you could say contact relationship manager. But I have a kind of another name. Based on that previous slide, I like uh, contact retention manager mm -hmm. because that's what you're really doing. You're trying to retain the information about your various contacts. Now, Civi CRM, as you can kind of see here, is has the basics of what you need. You can input new people very easily. You can search. You can go through. You can do things like that. The R and what makes it a relationship manager and what makes it more than just some contact book, some address book, some piece of paper, some database, is that you can track whether or not someone is a part of a household, a part of an organization, whether or not you met them at a conference, whether or not they're an admin, whether or not they're a volunteer. You can track all of this information and those are all relationships. Your activities, your phone calls, different relationships gives this tool great power and we'll get into that in a minute there are really three things that you need though to deploy something like this for yourself or another the first one is of course the CRM software and as I said Civi was chosen because of its um, free nature and focus 
but also because of its um, long history. It was, I believe, first really developed heavily during the, is it, please correct me if I'm wrong, is it Howard Dean or Dean Howard campaign? It's one of those Howard two. Dean. Howard Dean campaign. They really like brought this to the spotlight, spent a lot of time, and I mean, that was a minute ago. So this is something that's not just fly by night. The second thing you need is some sort of a CMS. Now, Civi is built on PHP. And there are three kind of major PHP CMSs. None of them are my favorite. I have a more favorite one. But Civi has now focused on supporting all three. You have, Dru you have Drupal, WordPress, and Joomla. I don't uh, Joomla. If any of you do, uh, check out the communities. I'm sure that there are things going on. I do WordPress, but WordPress is blog software. You can make it do more, but it's blog software. Drupal, however, is what Civi CRM was built on kind of initially. They had a standalone version and a Drupal version. And why is CMS is so important, CMS by the content management system, is that this adds all of that functionality beyond just it's a big database. It adds access control lists, user accounts that I guess are heavily related to access control lists, modules, forms, something that can parse HTML, something that can do all of these things that are required of a web enabled application. So while it can support all three, I'm going to talk mostly about Drupal because it is what Civi CRM has the most support under. It's what the majority of development is done with. Now, we have a community. We have this database. We have the way that it's being displayed. But the next step is where do you get some of this content? We've talked about conferences, business cards, whatnot. I think the, the third item in this trifecta is where you kind of focus on your community's building, your contact building. And for me, that's a form. <laughs> I mean, we're using kind of old words here, right? Everyone's on feeds or streams. But forms offer something that you don't really get from IRC, you don't really get from mailing lists, you don't really get from a lot of these other platforms. A form has user accounts, it has profile fields, it has moderation notes, it has groups, it has some sort of artifact attached to different community members. So for form software, um, we went with discourse. Some of you may or may not know, but uh, Linux Fest Northwest this year is a bit of a conflict date-wise. OzCon is like this week <laughs> in Austin, Texas. If it were in Portland, I'd probably go from here to there and continue on my stretch of not sleeping. But because it's in Austin, I ch opted for Linux Fest. That being said, last year I did both and I did OzCon. And pr prior to OzCon is this event called the Community Leadership Summit. It's where a bunch of community leaders come together and kind of hold an unconference and talk about this sort of thing. I ran a little group about Civi CRM and I asked people what tools they use for their communities, what not. Every single person in that room said, for form software, if you have a choice, if you're starting new, use Discourse. Tried it out, I like it. I don't know if I like the defaults, but I like it. Now, all of this bridges together, but none of it really matters without the people themselves. But who, who are, who's your community? Do, do I have, uh, people wanna give me a few kind of groups, subsets, what you'd consider a community member? You just wanna shout out a, one or two? It'd be like networking, it'd be different degrees of like social relations. So uh, quantify all of it as much as I can. Right? Sure. But like, what's a group? What's a, here, I'll start us off. Volunteers. It's part of your community. 
it's the people who, especially with you know free software projects, kind of make things go. How about your donors? Mailing list subscribees? What about um, your advisors? Your course staff? The general contacts on those business cards. Your community is this, this basically network of people who are somehow involved. <laughs> oh, the contingency arrives. Somehow involved with your project. Now, I've kind of gone through that list. I don't know if I have it in the slides here, but I will try to break it down. CVCRM does two major ways of categorizing groups of contacts. You have groups and you have tags. Tags are ephemeral. They're kind of like you can add them, remove them. There's no real log about whether or not people were taken into them. And they're not necessarily used for access control or mailing lists or things like that. But they are important. For me, everyone here would be tagged with Linux Fest Northwest. Not necessarily this year, but with Linux Fest Northwest. So that when I come to this event, I can say, search by this event. And now I know the contacts who either met here, or I know had interest in this, or I might want to get in touch. And that type of power is not something you're going to ever get with your standard address book, your standard Google contacts. Which is why combining them is what creates this, this powerful tool, this thing that I am up here hoping to share with all of you. We have Civi CRM, we have Discourse, we have Drupal. Together, make your contact address book. I, I have two cans, of course. Of course you do. You either well, don't don't just don't stand in front of me. We are running on your request. So you you, you either you either pour or don't don't just hand me a big uh, bottle. Of course, of course. Yeah, I'll get but for you. I am in the middle of this. So here's the unfortunate bit about uh, what's going to take a minute here, but we're going to do this uh, again. I really appreciate everyone who is here on the last session of the last day. Uh, for me, a four-day conference because I have been running this since I've been up here since Wednesday working on this. My next slide is a live demo, so please, uh, as your patient, I'm going to pull up the site and show you some of what Civi does, some of uh, what we've set up here. So. This is this is the kind of front page, Civi CRM. Hopefully it doesn't yell about being out of date. The first thing I want to show you is the administration configuration checklist. This is the thing that goes through and says, touch on every one of these. One of my big um, kind of recommendations if you're ever taking over any system or setting up a new system is just go through every single configuration file every configuration option you may not need to actually read them all but go through them so that if a question comes down the line you can say oh I, that word is familiar okay yeah let's do that it goes through a lot of stuff now let me see if I have uh, I have my note. My notes have kind of been moved around, so this is again. Thank you. <laughs> the next thing I want to mention is the components. Civi is built on top of Drupal, and Drupal is a CMS content management, but it's also a way to build modules and build larger things that can live within these same ecosystems. So these are the components. They're all officially released by Civi, and they're pretty legitimately cool. We have Civi Contribute, so you can take pledges, donations, membership drives. Like, all of that built into this kind of thing. Civi Pledge, I guess, is for the actual pledges, not the ones that have money and get transferred right then. Civi Events. Um, this 
conference, learning science Northwest, uses SIPI CRM. Right now, they're using a extended version of this, but in most years, they have used SIPI events for all of their registration. That's you know baked in. SIPI members doing membership management, mail doing email, whether that's templated or just an email thing, campaigns. Cam again, this was built for the Howard Dean. Howard Dean? Okay, Howard Dean campaign. And that's like people saying, okay, we're, we're gonna all get together and do this one thing, and we're gonna really work on that, and we're gonna work on it from different ways, whether it's pledge drives, whether it's door-to-doors, uh, -door, whether it's calls, make it into one campaign for one goal. CB, CB cases, really, really cool. CB cases are this idea that you open a case on someone. What's a case? An example might be someone who just submitted a volunteer application. What are the steps after that? You want to onboard someone. You want to go through certain things. And whether that's you or some other volunteer on your program, your group, your organization, you want to go through a certain step process. And you also want to know when it started and when it ended. City case builds all of this functionality in. And remember, we're, we're, we're dealing with these relations, the R, right, the relationships. So you now have a relationship between a person and a case that has a number of activities, which is all stored in something that's searchable, accessible, and controllable. It's kind of, kind of I think, a big deal. I mentioned groups versus tags. I can show you some of our groups. Uh, maybe. Okay. All right. So I mentioned, oh, admins. Didn't mention that. Advisors. Great. Announce list. It's a mailing list. The board of directors, of course. Case stuff. Partners. It's a holacracy term. Volunteers. These are the ones where you want to know when someone entered and left, and you want to be able to actually use those groups to control things, whether that's mail list, whether it's access, whether it's something else. Versus tags. That looks like tags, right? The last time I had uh, the two screens, so I was like, oh, if it's on this side, I can look here. If it's on this side, I can look here. This is kind of a new layout, but we have academia, major donors, other nonprofits, press, volunteers, government entities, uh, crowdfunding, just, you know, little information. Conferences, of course, my highlighter's gone. Here's the ones we've kind of attended and marked with people. I said CLS, FOSDEM, Linux Best Northwest, Liberty Planet, you know, the different things like that, and then areas of interest. So these are what we ask our volunteers. What are you interested in doing? They're just tags. You can add, remove, change. Very flexible. Contact types. <clears throat> when you add a contact type, You base it on one of three main things, whether it's an individual. In my case, that's the majority. In your context, that's who you're tracking. Whether it's an organization, partner organizations, or whether it's this idea of a household which has multiple individuals. You can create new ones. Why would you create new ones? Well, maybe. Your volunteers are the only one who need a notes field about their prior experience. You don't want to have that field on everything else. Very easy to do this. Very easy to create new <coughs> ones. Let's see. Location types. Uh, location types just starts, it opens this little kind of almost Pandora's box of, uh, we have a lot of weird custom data things. Um, drop down options. As it were, for instance, uh, website types. I was like, what websites could people do? I don't know. So 
I made a big list of things that I was like, okay, maybe we'll get some of these accounts. Which brings me to an actually interesting point, a point that came up in one of these talks. What data do you actually collect? What do you collect about your users? One of the big advice that was given during the CLS was don't collect it until you know how you're going to use it. I think it's a really good tip, really good advice. Unless you're building this for yourself. If you're building this for yourself, if this is going to be your end all be all address book, contact manager, etc., then you really want to have a place for any information that you might want to kind of have at some point. Because that's what you're doing. You're building your contact book. As a company, sales, I definitely want them to have less. But if it's something like this, it's in between. And how do you get consent? How do you get consent to add someone to this database? Giving a business card. I'd say that that's someone saying, okay, we've talked, we've whatever. You have my name, my this, my that. But you are sharing this with people, so it's, it's something to consider before setting something like this up. Profiles is another interesting part of Civi. We go into profiles. As you can see, there's lots and lots of things that can be customized. Uh, profiles. So profiles are these things that I thought were really cool at first and have since been like, wow, there's something way better. But I still think it's an important thing to look at. Profiles are, one, a way to collect information in like a controlled subset, like a volunteer form. We only need to fill out like this, 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 this. But also to make something that's searchable. For instance, if you want a public listing of people who attended Linux Fest 2017, that is only available for people who are attending Linux Fest 2017, you can easily create a profile that just shows that search to the people who are in that search. This is the type of power you get by combining all of these different components. Message templates I don't really show you, but you can template things, whether it's variables with first name, last names, addresses, uh, pledge amounts, whatnot. You can create a whole, now I'll, I'll like bring it up, but it's, we don't have any special ones, right? Uh, for instance, yeah, all right. Um, oh, you can do HTML and plain text. So then you can give people, hey, you have a preference of plain text. Well, you get the plain text one. Stuff like that. Uh, tokens are the things that allow, like, you can add all of this information that's either input or then save to your contacts. It's pretty neat. Scheduled reminders, scheduled jobs. Same kind of deal. Um, I think this is a, another actually pretty important thing. I don't know if I have any to display right now. Uh, contact follow-up. One week after the date field. So I added someone. Say I added your card here. It reminds me in a week, hey, Get a hold of that person. Remind them. What's another use case for that? Say you added someone and then tagged them with the conference. 300 days later, why not send another reminder saying, are you going to this conference? If so, talk to this, 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 this person. Having that type of functionality built in to your address book, to your contact management system, content, content, contact. Kind of, kind of neat, kind of important. Anyway, there's a bunch of functionality. I think you can take a look yourselves, go through. Did want to show you those ones. Oh, uh, let's see. Can I? Can is it? I always forget where it is from here because I'm somewhat new to it. But remember, I mentioned that profiles have kind of they're cool, but they're not like 
really cool. The reason I said that is there's this this component called web forms that um, uh, I don't know if I can just add a page and show you. Maybe, maybe not. Web content. Basically, what this thing does is it allows you to access like everything. I have to actually do it now. Oh, okay. Well, I won't show it to you right now, but point is you can make this form that not only like links through to all of your civi forms, your civi contacts, your civi boxes, your civi this and that, but is multi-level, is, is a fully fledged web form that's basically point and click. I mean, it's ridiculously simple. And that this was designed for nonprofit means that this stuff was designed to be used by people who don't necessarily have the resources or brain width to deal with large technical challenges. All right, so yeah. isn't there a way to like present Presentation mode or notes, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So let's get back to where we were. Boom! Pitfalls! You saw how cool it was. I love it. But there are some things to watch out for. First up, not reading the documentation. It is a significant amount of documentation, and um, I don't think I actually linked it, but it's it's like overwhelming, but also overwhelmingly like verbose and well done. If there's any feature you have a question about, there's usually a question mark goes straight to the documentation. It's all in Gitbook format. It's all very parsable, very readable. Read it before you set it up. Another big pitfall, deciding where it should live. This is, I know it's silly, but it was a pitfall for us personally. We tried volunteer dot, people dot. One of my favorites to go along with the snowdrift theme was slalom dot, because you're like putting your contacts in. We ended up with contacts dot, yes? But we do link that, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway, that's what we decide. But it's a pitfall, I would say, because the Im the amount of communication that went between our team about where it would live is a little mind-boggling when you're all volunteers, and that's just time, right? So something to consider. Um, Business-centric. I don't think I actually showed this, but... The locations that things are attached to, whether it's a website, a address, a phone number. You know, I think Google now doesn't default to anything. It's just it defaults to blank, and then you can say whether it's a home, office, other, whatnot. Well, this has a default, and the default is home because the term main in Civi is still from that whole customer thing. And this is something I think is actually pretty important to change. Main, for them, means main office. Main, for most of us, means that's the main one to use. That's like the phone number to use. It's pretty easy to change, but it's something that I would recommend changing. Collecting too much data, we talked about. It's, I, I don't know the correct answer, but definitely thinking about the data you're going to use before even adding a field for it. Not a terrible idea. Who gets to view the data? So with Drupal, you have these great access control lists, right? What if you only want your Northeast organizer to be able to see the Northeast contacts? That's something to consider when you're building this out instead of just giving everyone access to everything, especially with some of this personal data. Whether we're talking about phone numbers, addresses, business card information, pictures, admin notes 
donation amounts. It's a lot of inf information. Really consider it. Opt in, opt out. A card I'd say is kind of opt in, but how do you get that information out if you didn't want to be in there? They add a lot of easy functionality for things like double confirmation on emails, that sort of thing. This is a big one uh, for me, the last one I have. Waiting to configure everything. Uh, at our table, we're sitting here and like, we have people handwriting email addresses and um, our co-founder Aaron, he's just like, I really wanna make sure we follow up and talk to this person. I'm like, well then put it in Civi. He's like, but you, we haven't configured it out. And I'm like, no, if we don't start using it, it will never be perfect. We aren't creatures of perfection. I mean, most of us. As I mentioned, I don't have them up here. I guess you're here uh, also partially because these slides were designed um, for Liberty Planet. And then, you know, they got two talks in the, like basically the same month accepted for the same one. But a lot of big things use this. In North America alone, over 5,000 different nonprofits are currently using Civi CRM. I believe worldwide it's well over 10,000. I don't have the exact number because the source I had goes to an old wiki page that says 574. And when I said that number, someone in the audience was like, oh, I'm from Civi and it's over 10,000. I'm like, great, <laughs> then update your wiki. <laughs> <laughs> But some big names use it. And by having big names use it, this is an advantage of using something like this. I, this is kind of a hard slide to talk about for me. Because in the future, what do we have? If you read the write-up for this talk, one of the big things I was going to demo is some technical connectiveness. We were going to actually talk about how you could automatically get people's information from their profiles in the Civi and do this neat thing and all of that. And I apologize, it's, it's not here. We didn't have the resources, we didn't finish it up. We're working on it. Um, technically, how it's working, we're actually, basically, our developer said, hey, I think we have it working. How about you flip that switch? I'm like, my talk is in 20 minutes. How about I don't flip it 20 minutes before my talk? Who knows what's gonna happen? What we're doing is single sign-on, and we have a single sign-on hosted thing for our main website that then signs on to uh, signs on to Discourse. Discourse does basically a handshake, and all that information gets sent to Discourse. It's very easy to then also send all that information to Civi through the API to say, "Hey, propagate this." Civi has some pretty good deduplication. You can do a lot of this stuff automatically. So. The base level of what we want before all of that is I want to be a moderator on Discourse that can click one link that goes to their Civi profile. I want to be able to be on Civi, click one link, goes to their Discourse or their Snowdrift profile. It's really easy to send a hyperlink. That's no big deal. Stage two is I want information actually filled out. Stage three is admin notes being synchronized. Stage four, who knows? Mailing lists. We have this old mailman server that's clunking along. Civi handles mailing lists, handles it well. I want them all on there. But it's mostly announced lists. Civi is very much like for sending out to a group of people. It's not for interactivity. That's what Discourse is for. I want to get rid of all those interactive mail lists. Locations. I mentioned the whole access control. I would really like to have been able to say when I gave this talk in Boston, all of these contacts live within 10 miles of Boston. Why didn't I email them all? Civi has the ability, but it's not something that we've tapped into yet. Profiles, web forms, being able to kind of cut out the actual things we need. That's something we want to do. And as always, as future things go, just learning more, tweaking it, reading documentation. I've spent a lot of time on like bolt buses reading <laughs> Civi documentation. I've tweeted about it. But really 
the future of Civi, it's me, is getting people involved in using it so that it as a project can get better and it as a project can help make everyone's life easier. So my portion of the talk is coming to an end, but I really would like to have a discussion about how you'd like to use it, how you'd like to see it. I'll take some notes and hopefully we'll be able to figure out how this could become more than just a tool that's been used by a bunch of really cool, excellent nonprofits, but how it can become a tool that's used by each and every one of you. Thank you. All right, so questions, feedbacks, concerns, comments. I did notice that, yes. I, I, I talked to some of the MailChimp guys that attended. There were some local guys. Apparently, they're out of Austin, and they jumped in real late to get anybody here. So hopefully, they'll be back some other time, because I'd love to talk with them. But I bring them up, because Civic CRM, there are some people that have written some MailChimp webhooks. So if anybody here who's got a group that they manage that's thinking about Civi, and you've got a MailChimp list, you can keep the MailChimp in sync with your Civi. You can actually set it up to use it Mandrill, which was a transactional email platform. Uh, Mandrill, part. so it's always been called uh, MailChimp. Mandrill was the Man part that they Mandrill broke off to be man transactional. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yep. And they brought it in. They brought the Mandrill in, I guess, now as just a feature or an add on to MailChimp. So you can't have them separate anymore. Okay. But you can actually hook both of those in. I was managing a WordPress based Civic CRM for a nonprofit. And we had a MailChimp list going, and we actually Anytime somebody bought something from the website, we'd use the mint, which was a that was a different thing. We weren't selling to the city, but we would use that mandrel, and you could use that for any kind of transactional notes. But the best part was that web hooks. If somebody signed up on a city petition, you get them captured into your city, and you get them hooked right on over to your mail. So you can do some pretty good things with the city. Cool. That's good to know. Thank you. Um, All right, so question one about a standalone version. There used to be only a standalone version and a Drupal version, and they've discontinued the standalone version from everything I can tell. So I don't believe there is any future. Okay. Question two, I don't know. Uh, I have heard that it can work on some of the CMSs beyond Drupal, WordPress, Joomla. I personally have a favorite PHP CMS, Concrete 5, that I would like to be able to somehow hook into, but I have not looked at that, and if you're interested, talk to me after, because I think that would be great. I know they've had some, I guess, pushback against integration with other platforms. Um, specifically coming to mind is, this is super, super database heavy, and they use, um, my SQL slash MariaDB. We have uh, all of our stuff in Postgres, and this has been like why we had to do, why it's taken so long, but also why we had to deal with hooks and APIs and all of this, versus being able to say, no, the user table is this table, just use that one. <coughs> so I'm not sure how they are for other CMSs, but I think it's a great question. One thing to throw out there, since you mentioned databases, you do have an option, so I don't know about the Drupal or Joomla, but on the WordPress, and store the city information in your WordPress database if you want. I offered to go ahead and make a dedicated city one. Just because if we needed yeah. to separate anything out later, it'd be a lot cleaner already having it in the same database. That I I think that is correct, except I don't know if WordPress itself can do non MySQL databases, but if it could, then I don't think it would work. Well, no, this was all, these were in MySQL. Yeah, I know I'm sure they were, but but um, I, I agree. And that's yeah. And that's kind of also a security thing and being able to say, oh, well, these are all this. And this. Anyway, yeah. but good point. Uh, I tried to look at the Google Play Store for like a, an Android client for access to, like, to actually use it. I'd like to, like, I, I found myself using WeChat a lot and, and then uh, like Google Hangouts other things like Facebook groups are fairly convenient for gathering, but uh, it, it would be really nice to be able to, to just have an 
there are at least two things I can I know of uh, that are mobile focused with Civi. Um, one is with the modules. They're also um, so there's they have this idea of components and modules. And there's like Civi modules versus Drupal modules, and it gets a little complicated. But there are a number of Civi modules, and at least one of them is mobile focused. That being said, the big kind of backbone of this is that it's a CMS, and CMSs are generally mobile designed these days. So you could either run it as one of the, like a native pinned web app type thing, or you could just open it up. I believe with newer HTML5 you know, data types that you could easily get something that automatically adds like the telephone button or something like this uh, without too much work. Do you use the link protocol of TDL column? Yep. I want to say that makes something with the phone to the node and tap that node. It's going to present the number of the hyperlinks, but it's going to know send to the phone to dial it rather and than... And it's all PHP. It's pretty easy to extend. Email yourself or SMS yourself. I would think so, but then <laughs> you'd have. What, what, what is it you want notifications from? Like if, if uh, I, maybe I'm getting into sales or something like that. But if 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 you're interacting with somebody and you say, hey, uh, you need to talk to Jim. He knows that part of the environment here. Let me get your info. Give it here, Jim, and then it pops up on Jim's phone. Uh, well, you can. I mean, I don't know how. Side, there's, I mean, Civi comes with Civi rules itself, but then also Drupal rules as uh, integration. So, rules module in Drupal will actually act on Civi um, events, and so you can actually trigger anything you want yeah. inside there. And then I know that there's another Drupal module specifically for like notifications <coughs> on phones that you can tie in. So, yeah, there's ways to do There's that. definitely like push modules and pr things like that. Another really kind of, I think, uh, important point that that touches on is that because most of the developers run Drupal, if your civvy's on Drupal, there are a lot of things that people have already kind of done over and many years. And there's a lot of civ, like you said, there's civ plugins as well. You know, you got your Drupal modules, but you've also got civ modules. So that MailChimp oh. stuff I was talking about, those are actual civ add-ins. Yeah. Those aren't the only ones there are. There are, those are the ones that I use mm -hmm. for my use case, but you could probably go through the civ modules Payment gateways, so Salt was talking about uh, pledges and contributions. So you've got a payment processor, which is a bigger one that a lot of people are using. You may use some code out there already for dropping that module to process the payments right out of your So uh, you've got to go ransack the catalog. And again, it's PHP. That's, I mean, a, a big part, a reason why some of this isn't done, etc., is our project is uh, all Haskell. And, and I joined it partially <coughs> so that I wouldn't have to work on a technical project. I was like, I'm not gonna learn Haskell, I will help you from a community aspect. But because of that, finding people who have the bandwidth to work on things and the knowledge of Haskell, it's like, it's this, you know, this sliver right here. Mm -hmm. PHP is like, the, you know, it's the, who doesn't know PHP if you're a web programmer? Even if it's not your favorite, you know how to do things. You can, you know, shiv something in, <laughs> or shim, whichever. <laughs> Your PHP experience gives you. Other questions? We're uh, we're pretty much up towards the closing of the time anyway. I don't think. I don't know. I don't think they're supposed to go a full hour, or <coughs> fifty minutes or something. I got a little confused. Thank you all for making it again for uh, not actually being on the schedule. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I know uh, from my perspective, this was actually a surprise doing this talk uh, here and now because I was told that I was doing this yesterday and um, you know things got a little shuffled. So I'm really, really excited that I still got to do both talks, but um, it's very late in the day, late in the, the conference for me. Um, so hopefully I didn't fall over yet from my understanding. If there are any more questions, 
I just want to say thank you again. I appreciate it. So you have a Haskell project. All Haskell all the time. All Haskell all the time. That's a lot of energy. It takes a lot of energy to do all Haskell all the time. I don't do all Haskell all the time. <coughs> what, are you, what are you doing in Haskell? What is your team doing in Haskell? That is a very interesting combination. May I try this? Yeah. Holy cow. Right? <laughs> I'm like, that's not beer. I wouldn't do that. That's like maybe actually okay. <laughs> Dang. So, no, what is your team working on in Haskell? I'm curious. Snowdrift.coop, which is oh, a crowd yes. matching platform, right, which is crowd. amazing and going to no, change I the world. I talked to you guys about yeah. that uh, a while ago. I didn't know.